What time is it, Ian? It's bosh time, honey! That's right, it's bosh o'clock. 6 p.m. or 6, 10 past 6 o'clock. We are going to be making, baking for you the ultimate carrot cake from Bosch cookbook number one. There she is in all her glory. She is an absolute beauty. She's moist, she's sweet, she's got all of those lovely kind of autumnal spices and that grated carrot running throughout. In fact, let's just have a look at this grated carrot here. Top cam, look at that. So one of the nice things about this recipe and where I think this recipe may have come from is, um, you know, a way for people in medieval Britain to use up carrots that are going off, right? I think this is definitely <laughs> Completely logical. Chuck in some sugar and some lard and you got a cake. Boom, there we go. That is how it made, that's how they made it. Yeah, if any of you know the actual history, pop it down in the comments below. Um, but I'm gonna whiz on quickly because we've got quite a few steps to go through. The first thing I'm gonna show you, which is really exciting, is how to make a flax egg. Ooh. So a flax egg, if we pull over to this side, I have two ingredients here. One is um, two tablespoons of flax seeds. These little beauties, when you add water, will do this magical thing where they become this almost jelly-like and, uh, and essentially replace an egg. So to this two tablespoons of flax seeds, I'm gonna add, that was about six tablespoons of water. Just stir that around with my fork. That water's warm, so it's helpful to have warm water in that instance. And um, it just, it's just not gonna be as quick with cold water. It's just a little bit kinder. And then we're gonna leave that. It's already started to thicken, but we're gonna leave that for about five minutes. Five minutes, it's so cool. Vegan baking, a few years ago, people would be like, vegan baking isn't a thing, you can't do anything. <laughs> but now, you can. Absolutely. And through the magic of our life, here is one that we made earlier. And now if I again show you that up close, you'll see it really has thickened. Those flax seeds have kind of swollen. Um, they've become a bit more, a bit, a bit more turgid. It's a good word, isn't it? Turgid is a great Turgidity. Word. And um, it basically means kind of a bit firm. And I'm just gonna add that into a jug, which is ready for our wet ingredients. Because mm. our flax egg is now ready. So we've got a question about our dry ingredients. So one of the questions is, can you use self-raising flour rather than plain flour? And I reckon the answer would be yes, just as long as you leave out the baking powder and the uh, other raising agent that's inside it. Yeah, I would reduce rather than leave out maybe. So maybe uh, take a, a teaspoon off each, yeah. the bicarb and the baking soda. But yeah, give it a go. Baking soda. Yeah. <laughs> baking soda. Okay, liquid ingredients. The next one that's going into our wet mix is some oil. That is also going to act as a bit of a binding agent as well. Nice, very good. And we use vegetable oil there. <laughs> then going in with some plant-based milk. And two more liquids over here, which are, of course, you've got to have a little bit of vanilla extract, vanilla essence, vanilla bean paste, whatever you've got. But that vanilla flavour is just such a nice thing to add to any cake, really. Ooh, and this, this is a little chemical beauty. So this is our apple cider vinegar. We like to go for the one with the mother because it just has a little bit more goodness inside it. But also the acid in that is gonna activate the bicarbonate of soda. So that is what we're looking for and it's gonna help make this cake rise. So we'll stir that all together. Oh, look at that. And just make sure all of our wet mix is well incorporated. Now the key thing here, like you don't actually have to do this. If you're boshing through it, you could just chuck all these ingredients together in one bowl. Or as we sometimes do in a food processor. Yeah. But the thing about that is, you do have the risk that it won't incorporate too well. So being a bit more careful in this way might just make your cake come together a little bit better. Very good. Uh, good question just came through and it was about aquafaba. Could oh, oh. you like replace the flax egg with a bit of aquafaba? You could try playing around with aquafaba for this. What, uh, we might add it as well rather than instead. What I've always found with aquafaba as an egg replacer in baking is that on its own it isn't quite enough. Um, but I'm willing to be proved wrong. You know, I, I've not seen a recipe for baking where aquafaba nails it. I have for meringues, obviously. It's great for meringues, but not necessarily for baking for us. Very good, look at this. Okay, now I'll switch these two over. Our wet mix is ready, and it's time to make our dry mix. 
First up, we have plain flour, of course. As we said before, you could try playing around with uh, self-raising flour, just reduce those raising agents a little bit. Maybe you would try, I don't know, gluten-free flour. Lots of people are into gluten-free. That's a thing nowadays. Um, so you could try that. You might find that they're not quite as predictable um, with gluten-free. And that is firm sugar. <laughs> Yeah, this always happens. Like we, we measure out our ingredients like half an hour before, and then the sugar has just kind of dried out and sort of become really gummy in the bowl. But it'll be fine, don't worry. <laughs> okay, let's pop that in and we'll use our whisk to see what happens. So I'm gonna add in our brown sugar. That is a little bit on the firm side, but hopefully a whisk will just break that up. And now to those dry ingredients. Here we have a little selection. First up, cinnamon, ground cinnamon. That lovely cinnamony flavor, absolutely essential in here. Ground ginger, also a great thing to put in a carrot cake. Carrot and ginger go so well together. Nutmeg. Then we have baking powder, bicarbonate of soda, and salt. A little bit of salt, just to give us that extra little flavor throughout the whole cake. Oh, it's going to be a good cake, this. If you're cooking along, then we wish you all the luck in the world. And if you've got any questions or comments, let us know in the box below. So because that brown sugar was just a little bit clumpy, I'm going to use this whisk to just kind of help persuade it all to break up. You're going to obviously take a little bit more time and care over your version than this, because we're doing this live and we're doing it in a hurry for you lot. Which reminds me, actually, do stick your oven on now. Uh, now is the time to put your oven on. If you're cooking along at home, you want it on at 180 degrees. Yeah, sorry about that. We should have told you that. Yeah. Off. But as you saw, we were a little bit flustered because of the sound issue. But now we are back. Look, we've got these little uh, sort of <laughs> brown sugar stones. I'll get rid of them. <laughs> My goodness gracious. So, oh, it's some, it's just, maybe we should try this cake one time with um, courgette. Make a courgette cake. That'd be cool, right? Absolutely. That's one for the future. Yeah. So have you got any questions while that Q&A moment? Yeah, guys, if you've got any questions, then let us know. Cat is throwing them into my ear. Ah. Okay, uh, so Henry, we mentioned the mother. Um, do you know, like in yes. apple cider vinegar. Have we got a brief explanation as to what? <laughs> Uh, the mother is. What is the mother? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm simultaneously like finding the little stones in this uh, sugar, breaking them down <laughs> with my fingers. Um, right, so the mother is, if you think about uh, the process of making vinegar, it's like fermentation. And the mother is a little bit of the starter, basically. It's a little bit of that kind of active goodness that created the vinegar in the first place. Um, if you want to get a really high grade apple cider vinegar, you should try and get the ones that have the mother in it because it's really good for you. Yeah. So if you can get that in there, it's just a really nice thing to have in there. Um, I, I guess it's baking, so it's probably going to kill off any alive stuff that's in there. But it's just a nice thing to have when you're using apple cider vinegar. Mm. Yeah, um, I suppose it's kind of like a bit like a scoby, is it? A scoby <laughs> that you use for kombucha? Uh, yes, Yeah. basically, <laughs> in essence. Right, right, next up. So I've got most of the bits of sugar out and we are just going to add our liquid and whisk that through. Nice. If you did have a KitchenAid or a blender to hand, this would definitely be one of those recipes that you could hack and just make quicker with the use of electricity. But we thought for the sake of tidiness and simplicity, we'd just whisk this all together and then move over to a spatula. Oh my goodness gracious me. Yeah, the batter on these cakes is super thick, but that means that you get like a really nice, dense, moist cake, and that is what we're gonna have. And quite frankly, I'm looking forward to eating this afterwards with a cup of tea. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you don't need a cup of tea to eat a cake. It just doesn't make sense. I don't get it. What is it with you and also MJ? You've just got to have, anytime you think of cake, you think of tea, right? Oh yes, I think tea and cake go together, well, like salt and pepper. So if you think the same, let us know below. What is your favourite tipple with a lovely piece of cake? And also welcome to Bosch Live if you have just joined us. As a reminder, this is what we're making. This Ooh. is our, Ooh. oh, over here, this one. This little beauty. There it is. This is our carrot cake from Bosch the cookbook. The first cookbook. It's absolutely delicious. It's moist, it's got those lovely autumnal flavours, and we're whipping that together for you right now. Oh, 
my goodness. It's all good. So there we go. Batter is looking good. I'm going to pop that into our cake tin. Nice. Which is over here. Oh yes, of course. Thanks, E. No worries. <laughs> uh, just before I do that, I will be adding our grated carrot. So this is where the carrot in the carrot cake comes in. Let's get that beauty in there. And sultanas. Boom. Stir those through that batter. So now you can imagine we've got all those herbs and spices. We've got that sweetness. We've got all of that deliciousness to form our cake. Oh, it looks so good. So how's your day been in? How are you enjoying lockdown? Uh, well, yeah, lockdown, um, we're, we're here at the Bosch House, is 52 days we've been in. 52. Uh, which is a fair old while to be, yeah. in, to be locked down, but I think we're taking it as good as we possibly can do, and we hope that all you guys are too. Today was a lot of prep, and we also did a couple of bits of recipe writing, so those videos will be reaching Bosch TV very shortly. Um, keep your eyes out. Yeah, I mean, we've just basically carried on as usual. Um, but sadly, without the help of our amazing team, uh, at least in our house, they're yes. working from afar. Yeah, uh, it, how are you getting along? It, let us know how, um, how your working life has changed in the comments below. Are you, are you working from home like we are? Yeah, where, where are you all? Are you um, like in Italy or Spain? Are you finding like lockdown is getting relaxed and stuff? Or are you still in your houses? Be really interested to know how you're all doing. But in the meantime, back to our cake. This is now done. We have our grated carrots um, and we have all of our lovely batter in there as well, as well as those sultanas. So let's just pour this bad boy into a lined and greased cake tin. That's very, very important for you to remember. Grease first and then line, just to make sure that your cake doesn't stick. Yes, oh my goodness. Do you reckon you could do this with um, like two cake tins, you know, like two sandwich tins? Absolutely, yeah, I mean that's a, that's a nice hack actually, is um, because what we're going to do here is we're going to let this bad boy rise for 50 minutes and let it cool completely and then we're going to sandwich it in half. But yeah, if you were lazy, you could do what we did on Monday and just use two cake tins that were the same size, but you'd need to reduce the time, the bake time, to about 25 or 35 minutes. We're going to follow the Bosch recipe, which is one big high cake tin that is going in the oven at 180 for 55 minutes. 55 minutes, you say? Oh my goodness gracious. And now, so that was our cake and it's like it's going to be in the oven and when it comes out it's going to be thick and it's going to be moist and it's going to be delicious and now we're going to show you how to make some icing so i'm going to go and grab a little um, machine that's going to make the job infinitely easier than what do what it would do with hand did you just say moist i did <laughs> on, on, on boss live oh yes um so uh, if you know mj she's my fiance she's upstairs aren't you mj no, she isn't. Uh, she hates the word moist. Uh, and we, yeah, what other use? What other word can you use to describe a nice and moist cake? Wet. But where isn't? Where, where is the mistake? Right. So where is not what you're looking for? Moist is the only word. Um, if you, I don't know if you noticed, but we launched some Bosch cakes. Uh, they're now available in Tesco in the UK, which we're super excited about. And we had to use the word moist on the packaging. Yes. So obviously it is the right word to use, but um, we did explore to see if there were any other options. Here we go, look. Boomer. So if I put that on the top cam, these are our cakes by the way. We have chocolate and lemon. Woohoo! There's a picture of us hanging out there. Oh yeah, have we got good. focus? Oh, there, there we, we go. Oh, look at that. Look at good boys. Not too bad, not um, too bad at all. But if you check out top cam. Yeah. Oh, look at them. Oh. Ah, oh, chocolate. There we go. Moist. Mm, yum. <laughs> and, and it says moist on the lemon one as well. <laughs> exactly, it had to be done. Yeah. Right, I said I'd get through this quickly, I'm uh, waffling. But we're having fun, it's fun. We're having fun, yeah. exactly. Right, so now what we have on our deck, which Ian has nice and efficiently put in place, is a KitchenAid. I must stress, you do not need this machine at all. You can do this with just a bowl and a wooden spoon. Uh, it's just gonna be a little bit quicker for you lot, so that's why we're gonna do it in this machine. Um, it'll take us about three minutes, whereas with your hand, it might take 10 minutes. We're gonna make an absolutely lovely, fluffy, kind of vegan buttercream icing. That is what we're going for here. So, 
in with our plant-based butter. Now the key here is we would just want to fluff that up. So if we get that bad boy on, give it about 30 seconds. Don't forget the blender dance, dude. Okay, that is now nice and soft and it's kind of ready to uh, be mingled with other things. Um, and I think I find the key with using this, because I do think you get a better result with the KitchenAid, you could use a food processor, is just to add the other bits slowly. Because if we chuck all of this icing sugar in here immediately, we're going to get a big cloud of madness. <laughs> we don't want a big cloud of madness. We're going to get a little bit of cloudage, so be prepared for that. But just a little bit of cloudage is fine. So we add a little bit of icing sugar, let that take, maybe speed it up one. Tiny bit more icing sugar, or confectioner's sugar, as one might call it, over the, over the pond. Yeah, they call it powdered sugar as well. Do you reckon that icing sugar is literally just sugar that's been around? Super, right? super fine. Yeah. Super, super fine. And you'll see that is kind of starting to come together to form our icing. If I turn it up one, yeah, yeah we're yeah. good. And that'll start to take, and then we can add a little bit more. What's that? Ooh, it, it, ooh, it's, it's, it smells really alcoholic. It is, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's got like, um, yeah, very alcoholic. Mm. Uh, it isn't alcohol, it is a vanilla extract. Um, but it does, does, yeah, it smells a bit like, um, well, like a kind of vanilla. Oh, well, Shot. Cat is just whispering in my ear. Apparently, technically, it is alcohol. Oh, is it? Yeah, but mild. You wouldn't like to be super, super drunk off the back of it. Should we like have it. a drink? Uh, <laughs> it's very expensive. <laughs> very expensive. Okay, that is going in. That is a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And now, because it's ready, I'm going to add a little bit more of our icing sugar. I'm very impressed by how little cloudage we have so far. Yeah, this is good technique. Nice and slow. Yeah. Oh. Um, if you guys want, uh, want to sort of busy yourselves, you could nip onto Google and uh, type in vanilla, how does it grow? Because it's very cool. Very, very cool indeed. How does vanilla grow? And you'll, you'll, you'll be amazed if you don't know already. <laughs> um, and the final ingredient that I'm going to add in here, which is going to give us that kind of uh, soured effect, um, is just, I'm going to squeeze in the juice of half a lemon. Um, be really careful to catch the pips. That's what I'm using my hand for here. So I literally, if you look, I squeeze in the juice into my fingers, catch the pips there, and then just let that juice dribble in. Um, is that one of the lemons from the tree that you're, well, parents in law? Is it parents? Yeah, yeah my, my parents in law. No, this is not one of their lemons, no. sadly. No, we, we're keeping them for special occasions. Oh, yeah. Although this kind of is a special occasion. Is special. Yeah. But the lemon cake feels like more of a special occasion, right? That's true, that's very true. A little bit more powdered sugar. Maybe time for another question? Yeah, guys, if you've got any questions, then now's the time to ask them. Cat! Why did we choose lemon drizzle and chocolate cake for the first two products that we put into supermarkets? That's a very good question. I think the honest answer is that uh, Tesco chose. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, there was a bunch of them that we've uh, developed and they may or may not be reaching stores before long. Yeah, and I think that was it. Like We wanted to, to start with classics. Uh, Bosch has always been about mainstream and trying to appeal to the maximum people possible with plant-based food. So chocolate, that's a classic. Lemon drizzle, that's a classic. We did also work on a vanilla one that was absolutely amazing. So um, we'll see. That may hit the shop soon. Yes. And this, if you didn't, if you've forgotten, we're making a carrot cake, and uh, that's uh, pretty much a classic cake as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, it's 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 a kind of it's like a the kind of thing you get in a garden centre. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's a garden centre cake or a museum cafe. Yeah. Um, you get your carrot cake, and uh, who knows why. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it's just like the classic stuff. I know, yeah, Sheffield um, Museum, I can safely say they definitely have something like that. They'll have apples cakes, they'll have cream cheese with scones, they'll have lemon drizzle, they'll have carrot cake and chocolate cake. Well, I mean, it's a good place. Should we go there? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, none of it's vegan, <laughs> oh, well, but maybe it will be soon. Oh yeah, and we're not allowed there anyway because we're on lockdown. <laughs> Damn you, lockdown. Right, this is fine. All of that flat, uh, icing sugar has, all of that icing sugar has disappeared. I'll speed it up just to remind it that it can go that fast. Okay, but let's not turn it into some kind of a like, crazy concoction. 
That is looking absolutely lovely. Yeah, that does look that So good. think about that, that is fluffy. It's been beaten, just gently beaten, combined with all of that sugar and with the lemon and also with that vanilla extract. That. Oh, there we go. Top, toppy, toppy. Top can, there we go. That is, I mean, it almost looks like ice cream. Yeah, that really is. I wonder if it would pass the um, Mary Berry meringue test. I don't think it would. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> shall I, shall I? You can try. Go on. Oh, ah! <laughs> it is wanting to fall off. Oh um, right, enough nonsense. That is our icing. It's looking absolutely incredible. Our cake, by the way, if you're cooking along, your cake will have been baking for 55 minutes. And right now, it should be nice and hot. Take it out of the oven and let it cool down to room temperature. I can't stress enough, you need to really, really let that thing cool, uh, maybe for an hour or so, um, so that it's fully cool and dry on the inside. That's gonna make it easier to cut in half. We've got one that we cut in half. Ian, thank you so much. You're welcome, there you, you go. You want it? Look at that, eh? Hey? You want it? Sick. So that's our bottom half. Um, and there is a top half still to come. Yep. If there is a little bit of time in between you um, making that icing and getting your cake, actually putting your cake together, then by all means pop this bad boy in the fridge. That's what we've done. I need a spatula. Spatula? I think they're in the dishwasher actually. Is it? Oh goodness gracious. Guys, now's the right time for a question. If you've got one, I can answer it as we're getting our spatula. Any other ideas for egg replacers? Now you can use applesauce, you can use mashed up banana, you can use aquafaba even though we've only done it a couple of times. Flaxseed is really, really good, but it's like, it's not just flax seeds, it's like flax seed meal. So you've ground up the flax seeds and you've mixed it with warm water and it's got this really nice viscous quality that does exactly the same job as egg. Boom. Boom. Right, time to ice this bad boy. I've got my icing here, I've got my bottom half of the cake, I'm gonna take about a third of this icing. Oh, whoop, one second, wait for the camera. Let's wait for that. You, you see, if you're, if you're watching this, we always have to get these perfect shots, don't we? There, it is. there we go, lovely. Right, so that bad boy is going on here, like so. It looks thick, that icing, man. Absolutely one. lovely. And you know, take your time over the icing. Um, it's absolutely fine to just do it slowly and surely. The icing, if you have had it in the fridge for a bit, might be a little bit on the cool side and it'll want to warm up as you spread it around and um, make it easier to work with. And then I'm just going to slowly ice this all over this bottom half of the cake. Mm -hmm. This might be a good time for more Q&As while we're doing this. Q&A questions? So time. many Q&As for this one. Yeah, this is a goodie. Uh, Kat, any questions? Ooh, that's a goodie. Can we use uh, coconut flour in baking? I suppose you could. I suppose you could. Yeah, there's no reason why you can't use coconut flour, um, especially not if you're adding it to regular flour rather than substituting it out. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good question. Uh, and, ah, uh, okay, uh, but, oh, this is good. This isn't questions. These are suggestions instead of the word moist. Aha! Uh -huh. Go on then, cat. Hu okay, so this is a good one. Humid. What do we reckon to that? <laughs> yeah? Isn't that how you describe the air? <laughs> well, yeah. A humid cake. Yeah, and we've got another one which is quite <laughs> easy. Damp. But that's just not a good word. Yeah, damp. It's kind of like what happens at, like, by the skirting board in your knackered old Victorian yeah. house. Or that smell of a cloth that's kind of going off. Yeah, the ones that you like. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 got a good one. S succulent. Oh, succulent's good. That is a good one. Yeah. That is that works. Yes, yeah, succulent. Why yeah, that... put succulent on the bottom of the cake? Well, it's a long word. I don't okay. know if it would fit, and it needed to be one syllable. Yeah. I think. It's the sort of thing. It's like rich, dark, succulent. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. It's very Nigella, isn't it? It is. Nigella would use that word. Uh, oh man, and do you know what I would, uh, which word I would use to describe this cake? Uh, carrot. Yummo! <laughs> Yummo. Uh, did you invent that word, Ian? Um, I wouldn't say I invented it, but I definitely, we've definitely massaged it into the ether. Yes, you certainly did. 
Right, the bottom half of our cake is done. Let's have a look. Hey, there we go. So I've got a nice even coverage. I used about a third of that icing and I'm going to add the top half to the here. Oh man, this is just waiting for the goodness. And here is the goodness. Here is oh, a half. Oh, 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 here it is. From the top. And oh, boom. Boomer. There we go. Lovely. Look at that. Try and make it nice and flat. Oh, this one looks nice actually. It's got a nice round top. Do you know what I've never thought of before? It kind of looks like um, an inverted. Oh, no, no. Like, do you know what? Right. <laughs> it's Victor, right? I, I know what we're going on a, on a, so, on a journey here, aren't we? If, if you imagine a Victoria sponge, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So a Victoria I'm just going to ice while you, has while you go. White sponge, but it also has um, like a red inside. And this is like the inside out of that. This is like the sort of anti Victoria sponge. Because it's like dark sponge rather than light sponge and sort of uh, light in it. Right, you know, I see. It's like it, like on Photoshop when you go yeah. control what? and I and it inverts the colours. Inverted, inverted yeah. colours, that's right. <laughs> this is the inverse, the inside out version. It's kind of like um, what Venom is to Spider-Man. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or Satan and the God. Yeah. Or, or the Grinch and Father Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> what other opposites are there? Set, let, right, let us know in the comments what <laughs> opposites are there. Oh my God. What, what's happened today? This what is, has happened? This I is a we madness. Should, um, we should do complicated recipes more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if you're cooking along with us, uh, sorry. Well, congratulations. <laughs> you're doing a great job. Right, there we go. That's looking nice, it's looking good. So my icing is still a little bit firm from that fridge. Mm -hmm. So it's taking a little bit of persuading to get around the edges, but we're getting there. Mm -hmm. Slow and steady wins the race here. Slow and steady does win the race. Or slow and steady wins the cake. Whee! There we go, it's looking good. And uh, icing your cake is a very therapeutic thing to do. You need to take your time over it to make sure that it's good, even distribution, and also uh, to make it look good, right? Because you eat first with your eyes. Absolutely, and you could, like, there are other ways you could ice a cake. You could obviously do some kind of piping situation, but we like to make things look a little bit messy mm -hmm. and achievable. That's a really nice word to think about food styling, is we like to make it achievable and almost look a little bit home done. Yeah. This is definitely home done. Oh yeah. Seeing as we are at home. Like yeah. we are, you are at home too, because obviously this is quarantine time. Uh, hopefully that you're all making the most of this, um, of, of these, uh, well, last couple of months really. Yeah. All right, I think that'll do. Um, so, we've got our, our cake. The icing is nicely laid out across the top. Now, in order to just top this off, we're going to add something special, aren't we, Ian? Yes, indeed we are. And hopefully, if you've got some and you're cooking along with us, you'll be adding them too. They're crunchy. They're kind of oily. They look like brains. and They, they look are. like brains and they're good for your brain. They are, apparently so. I read about that, about how um, food that looks like a body part is usually good for that <laughs> body part. I don't know if that's Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a blanket statement that we can say is true, but... Um, yeah, walnuts are definitely good for your brain and they're also going to look nice on top of this cake. Yep. So, we're going to go one in the middle and then make the clock. The clock. There, da, 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 da. there goes that bad boy. There goes that bad boy. There goes that bad boy. Just come in a little bit closer for that last one. Hold, hold up, hold up. Oh, hold up, wait, wait for it. All right. And boom. boom. That's one. Boom. boom. Perfect. That looks good. And close. the final thing we're going to be adding is this little beauty right here. This is just some lemon zest. Where am I going? There. Lemon zest. So you can just use a grater uh, to take the skin off a lemon. This is, and let it, maybe let it dry for five minutes or so before you sprinkle it. Just make it easier to sprinkle. And that on the top is going to add a lovely acidic fragrance. What's the left hand? A lovely acidic fragrance to the top of this cake. And it just makes you feel like you're doing something a little bit decorating. Oh man, it does look damn good, that is. Absolutely lovely. Simple, easy to make, great to make with kids. If you've got your kids at home, if you're schooling your kids at home, um, it's a fun one to make because they can use the, uh, <laughs> the walnut brains. And that is in 
just about 30 minutes, the Boss Carrot Cake put together for you guys. Good work, mate. That is very, very Thank good. Thank you. After the uh, audio start, the lost audio, thanks for bearing with us throughout that. It's just one thing left to do. Ooh, the best bit! Let's cut the cake! Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I better get a knife. I'll get a knife. Are you getting the knife? I'll get the knife. Oh guys, oh my goodness, I hope you're as excited about this as I am. If you've got any questions, cat, let us know. Are we going to do a marathon after all of these cakes? That's a good idea. <laughs> we should probably should do, yeah. Oh, I was talking about a marathon. I think I know who's asked that question and maybe. 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 Uh, yeah, I, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> We definitely need to do something after all these cakes. I, whose idea was it to do five cakes in a week? Well, uh, it was the, it, the reason why we're doing it is because... Oh, we've got the cakes coming out, that's right. Out, we, you know. We've got to celebrate those cakes. Right, I'm going to cut a slice. I'm actually going to just... It, it? Oh, the, sorry. That camera. Yeah, that Shall I go here then? Yeah, yeah. That you slice there. there. Perfect. Yeah, yeah perfect. Nice okay, I'll go in first here. Oh, because I want to actually just get this little bad boy a bit out of the way. I'm cool. going to go there. Yes. Oh, beauty. Sounds good. Does sound good. How's that on camera? I mean, it looks damn good. Looking good? Yep. Okay. Final okay. slice. Side cam, we'll top cam. cam. We'll go side Shall cam. Shall I like reach in like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So, here we go. There it is. It's like a little shark. Oh. Oh. Very good, and now... And now the lift up. Yeah, let's go. All else. important lift up. Let's check that we're free, Mr. Little Cakey. There we are. There oh, we are. no. Let's I just know. check. Let's just check he's free all the way down. There we go. This happens yeah. a bit behind the scenes in the Bosch vid. There we go. That's the one. Ready? Yeah. Da, 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 da. Whoa! Ooh. We lost a bit. No, no, I think it's cool. That's good. If you pop that back in there and then we'll go really close in. Okay, cool. I think that's going to be fun. Let's uh, get real second, close in. Uh, awesome, we should get that in focus. We've got focus. Nice, nice, nice. Ready? Okay, guys, one second. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boomer. Let's see this go. Hey, hey. Beauty! Very nice. Happy with that. 30 minute cake. It is going to take you a bit longer because you've got the 50 minute bake time and the cool time, um, but it's totally worth it. Let's it's serve time up. To, to, time to eat some Time to taste. Nice. Uh, Kat, if you've got any questions now, as hope it's just getting played, we can answer a couple. Which book is this from? This is from our first cookbook, which is aptly named Bosch. And um, yes, it's one of two cake recipes. The other one is the ultimate chocolate cake. This is the um, wonderful carrot cake. It's not called the wonderful carrot cake. It should be called <laughs> cracking carrot cake. Cracking carrot cake. Yeah, that's a very boshy name, isn't it? Right, do we have any housemates to come and taste this? Oh, housemates assemble. Uh, yeah, guys, so that is, like, look at it. Again, I'm just gonna give it you there from the top down cam. Look at it, how nice is that? Give it a thumbs up. Yeah, baby. Thumbs up. Amazing. Got some forks. Right. So that is our carrot cake. Before we taste it, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, do subscribe or like if you're not already, um, because we're making videos like this all the time. 6 p.m. every weekday. For now. For now. Um, we are working out what we'll do in June, but we're busy, busy making these lives, so do subscribe. And thank you for hanging out with us and putting all your little comments in there as well. Yeah, it's been a lot of good fun. And like full dis full disclaimer we haven't worked out what we're doing next week so let us know what you want us to do in the yeah. comments below so that is our carrot cake let's have a quick taste oh look we've got we housemates. housemates here we are welcome darren bodyweight d welcome mj mj dot makeup artist artist mj dot makeup artist bodyweight d on instagram go check them out if you haven't already we'll let you guys go thank you very much have a list oh, yes. absolutely amazing what day is it day it's three cake day, day three at the cake house um, oh. I was gonna go for this slice, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's have some cake. Oh, the shots. cream looks good. Oh, yeah. What's in the cream to make it super fluffy? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, should I do the? Yeah, that's fine. You should need to uh, angle that camera a bit. Mm. That cream is delicious. I got more cream than cake actually. <laughs> I'm trying well, that's to, a good thing, right? To, yeah, I'm trying to manage my portion control. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Don't do that. Well, well, you, what, you want to eat more, right? Down. I, well, I heard you mention someone said that we might need to do a marathon. I don't know if I'm really up for that, so <laughs> maybe I need to eat less cake. It's delicious. Uh, I'm just going to have a little, little So little. as it's a carrot cake, does that mean it's basically just um, a salad? Yes, a salad. It's a salad. Was up yeah. five a day? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Or one cake that. a day. That one big carrot salad. One cake keeps the doctor away. No, I don't no. think it works that way. Does it? <laughs> I'm, I'm going with that. <laughs> that is absolutely delicious. delicious. We've proper destroyed that. <laughs> That's what it looks like. That is the uh, Bosch oh, carrot cake. Look at that cream. See inside. Oh, look at that. Absolute beauty. Marks out of ten. I'm going to get nine and a half. Nine like and that. a half. Yeah, really good. I'm not really a carrot. Cake fan, oh. and that's delicious. It's delicious. Yay! So I would eat all of it. Amazing. E, I like the spices. You've got a great nutmeg in there, and there's some good ginger in there. And I like the sort of um, it's got like a, a mild crisp to it, so it sort of like locks in the crumb. Yeah, the outside's got that little bit of crunchiness. Yeah. yeah. And the really nice thing about popping lemon zest on top as well is you get that kind of lovely fragrance in the back of your nose as well. The lemony sweetness, delicious. Yeah, it's a good cake, and if I'm going to give a number, I'll give it a nine. Solid nine. What about Solid. you, Hennis? Mm. Well, I made it, so I can't, uh, I can't judge. Ten. <laughs> ten. ten. <laughs> ten. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we love hanging out with all of you. Thanks for all your comments. Do we have time for a question? Question, Kat? Any more for any more? Okay. You've got to make lunch or dinner, haven't you? Okay. Have I? Or one oh, of you. So <laughs> say it's your <laughs> round of dinner, aren't you? It would just be pasta we... again. <laughs> yeah, great. The question is, how many cookbooks do you have? <laughs> yeah. We have four cookbooks. Uh, no, four books. <laughs> yeah. Three cookbooks. <laughs> and another one coming out on the 17th of September this year. It's available to pre-order right now. It's called Speedy Bosch. Speedy Bosch. Speedy, speedy, speedy. So the cookbooks are Bosch, that's the first one. Bish Bash Bosch, second one. <laughs> then Healthy Vegan. Bosch Healthy Vegan, that's the third one. And <laughs> speedy, speedy Bosch, that's the fourth one. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you for that question. Yes, that's um, a good one. The links to find all of them will hopefully be in the comments or on our website, bosch.tv. Cool. And I suppose... We, we're going to wrap up now. Yeah, man, we need to go start training for that marathon. Yes, I am actually going to go for a runner. Good man. <laughs> guys, see you later. See you later, guys. It's been a pleasure.